I've been testing the Rincon Gen 2 specifically for one thing, sleep tracking. And not just how long I'm sleeping, but how deeply I'm sleeping, how rested I feel, and even whether I might have undetected sleep apnea. It's been eye-opening in more ways than I expected, and today, in this Rincon Gen 2 sleep tracking review, I'm sharing what it actually tracked, what surprised me, and whether it's worth using for you in your own sleep health. Chances are you're already familiar with the Rincon Gen 2, so I left a dedicated link in the description down below to buy it with an exclusive discount. Or you can reach the same deal via the QR code you see on screen right now. So, one of the things that really stood out while using the Rincon Gen 2 is just how much it tracks while I sleep. First up, the Rincon Gen 2 Smart Ring automatically tracks my sleep stages, including light, deep, and REM sleep, and shows my full sleep cycle graph in the app. So I can see not just the total time, but how restorative my sleep actually was. So here we are on the Rincon app on my phone, and this is the main homepage or your main dashboard. If we go one section down, we can see the sleep section where it says seven hours and 57 minutes and a score of 91. However, we're gonna get into the sleep score in a little bit, I'm going to focus on sharing with you the sleep stages portion of the app and of the data. So if we scroll down a little bit, this is where my sleep stages are shown to me. We have a graph right up top where if I, if I use my finger, I can slide across the time frame of when I was asleep to see at what point in the night I was in what stage. So we go to the beginning here. You can see I fell asleep around 2.33 and 2.45 in the morning, which is not normal for me. And I woke up, we go to the end here, at about 11.15 in the morning, almost noon. And that is not normal for me at all. And I'm gonna get into some of that later and how that plays into how you're feeling versus what the app is telling you. Because sometimes the app tells you that you slept great, yet you wake up feeling maybe a little groggy or still tired. And I'll get to that in a minute. So the section under that, has movement and as you can see we have low moderate and high and this shows the graph from when i started falling asleep to the moment i woke up and as you can see i did some toss and turning throughout the night which has been happening recently but if we scroll down a little bit more this section is my favorite when it comes to the sleep stages i have awake rem light sleep and deep sleep and this bar shows how much percent of the night was i spent in each of these stages and it says at the bottom here, both deep sleep and REM are at or above the optimal range, often indicating a high degree of recovery. And I like this because as you can see, that little gray bar with the white lines next to it indicates where the optimal range is. And as you can see with each of my stages, I'm falling in that optimal range. So not only did I get seven hours and 57 minutes of sleep, I got my eight hours, but my sleep stages were in the optimal range. And that's really good information to see and to know. And it's nice to see it in a very clear visual way here. My REM cycles honestly are not where I thought they would be because of how I felt this morning and yesterday morning. I thought they would not be in the optimal range, but they are. So it's good to know that my body is being recovered. And that means that my tiredness or my grogginess throughout the day has to do with something else. It has to do with me being extremely sick last week and also my stress levels uh, for other reasons have been very, very high, which can impact how you're feeling throughout the day. But it's good to know that my body is getting the sleep that it needs. Perfect, I love it. I love seeing this, easy to read, good information on here, solid. What last thing I wanna mention in this sleep stages section before we move on, there's a little ticker at the top right corner that says sleep heart rate. If I click that, it's gonna show me my heart rate and my average heart rate throughout the night and what it was during each stage of sleep. So for example, when I was in REM sleep, my average heart rate was 57 beats per minute. When I was in light sleep, my average heart rate was 53 beats per minute. When I was awake, obviously my heart rate was the highest at 59 beats per minute. So definitely gives you a lot of information. You can see a line graph at the top there showing your heart rate throughout the night. And that's really interesting to see as well. But there is more heart rate uh, data that it gives you while sleeping that I'm going to get into in just a minute here in a different section. Secondly, the Rincon Sleep Score combines everything. Sleep duration, efficiency, heart rate, blood oxygen, and even skin temperature to give me an easy to read overall score each morning. Now, back at the home dashboard, 
let's click on the sleep section. And this is the first thing that you're gonna see when you wake up in the morning and open up the app. My sleep score was a 91 and it says, excellent. Now we can click on sleep score factors. And these are some of the items that I just listed. This is all the metrics, all the data that it takes into account to tell you how your body is feeling right now or how it's reacting to your routine. It takes into account your sleeping heart rate, your sleeping skin temp, your time of sleep, your sleep efficiency, your sleep goal gap, time awake ratio, your sleeping HRV, lots of good data come into this score. And if we go back, we can see the time of sleep was seven hours and 57 minutes. My sleep efficiency was 91 and it says, excellent sleep quality will keep you energized today. So obviously I can go in and see all of those metrics single-handedly like my skin temperature my heart rate variability while i was sleeping and everything and i'm going to show you that in a second but it's nice to get just a clear overview like sometimes i don't want to take time to go and look at every single metric of my body while i was sleeping that night i just want to know the score hey did i sleep good or did i not let's just get down to brass tacks here you know 91 good i consider that a good night's rest now however this number does not always indicate how you are feeling but regardless it's nice to know that they know that because if you look right below that it says subjective sleep rating so that's telling me that objectively i got good sleep 91 right good score my heart rate was good my spo2 everything's solid however it's asking me how i felt waking up i can grab this little thing here and put it to about normal optimal or the least one is poor and honestly i'm gonna give it like a four it's like borderline feeling poor, but also kind of feeling normal. You know what I mean? And it's nice to know that this app is taking that into consideration. And um, it's also sort of confirming to you like, hey, just because you slept good, let us know how you feel, right? So that's really interesting. And I like that they added that. The smart ring can also track my resting heart rate overnight, a key recovery metric that tells me how relaxed my body is while I sleep. So back in the sleep section, we're gonna scroll down past the sleep stages. Remember, I can click on sleep HR there and get a little overview of my sleeping heart rate throughout the night in my sleep stages. But if I continue scrolling, I have the heart rate section right here in beats per minute. So my average is 55 beats per minute and my recent seven night average is 62. Now on this graph, they make it very easy and clear to read. That thick red line is where my heart rate throughout the night. That dotted or dashed line at the top there is my recent seven night average. And that pink sort of thick section on the graph is the sleep standard heart rate. Now, what is that? We can click the little information icon and this just tells me basically where the average, where the normal range should be. So that's the sleeping heart rate section. Easy to read. It's something I look at here and there, but I don't really check it out as soon as I wake up. You know what I mean? But it's good information to have when I feel like reading into it. Alongside that, the Rincon Gen 2 is the best smart ring when it comes to tracking one's HRV. That's heart rate variability, which gives me a window into my stress levels, resilience, and recovery. The ring measures this every two and a half minutes throughout the night. Now to look at the HRV section of last night's sleep, we're gonna go back into the sleep section. We're gonna scroll down past the heart rate and right there, HRV. And this is gonna show me my heart rate variability throughout the night and my averages. Now, for those of you who don't know what heart rate variability is, it's basically counting the time in between heartbeats, okay? And at the bottom here, it says that compared with your sleep over the past seven days, your HRV remained stable, indicating that your recovery remains the same as the past. Now that's a little bit broad. It says that my recovery remains the same as the past. Well, was it good in the past or was it bad in the past? Where's sort of my normal? So it's not really telling me if it's good or bad. Now I have to do some interpretation myself. Now, if you look at the graph, that dotted or dashed line is my recent seven night average. But what I would like to see is the average in a healthy person within my age range, right? Give me someone in their late 20s, early 30s who's healthy and they have that data and they can show me where I should be standing. Like if I can see my average, well, I don't know where my average is supposed to be. I may also see my respiratory rate. That's how many breaths I take per minute while sleeping. This can be useful for spotting irregular patterns linked to stress or illness. Now, just under the HRV section that we were looking at, we have SPO2, skin temperature, and lastly, respiratory rate in beats per minute. 
My average is 15. My range, I guess my average range, I don't know, 13.1 to 16.3. And my recent seven day average is 15. So what does that mean though? I don't really know. Maybe I can click on this little information icon. And here it shows me in the second line, a normal resting respiratory rate for most adults ranges from 12 to 20 beats per minute. And in every category here, my range, my average, my seven day average, I'm within 12 to 20. So it's good to know I'm in an optimal place or in a normal range. However, it would be nice if that little line was right here on this page, instead of having me click another button to get that information. You see what I'm saying? Furthermore, the blood oxygen monitoring on the Rincon Gen 2 runs every two seconds while I sleep. This is a big one because drops in SpO2 can signal things like sleep apnea risk or breathing issues. So if we scroll up above skin temperature, we have the SpO2 section. Now, my average is a 96. My recent seven night average is a 96. So I'm pretty consistent across the board. Again, we have a graph here, just like the other ones where I can use my finger and scroll through the night. And it does give me a little confirmation at the bottom saying during sleep, the overall blood oxygen trend is normal. You see how it does that on some categories, but on other categories, it doesn't. It's like, it's nice to know. Just tell me, am I normal? Am I good or am I bad? If I'm bad, show me how to fix it. If I'm good, tell me I did a good job. If I'm normal, cool. Let's leave it at that. You know what I mean? It's interesting that it's not there for like the respiratory rate section, for example. And just like other graphs, they're staying consistent with it, where that light pink, the thick area is the optimal SpO2 range. So it's nice to know that I'm in the optimal range for the most part, except for this little 30 minute window where I, you know, had a little dip and then went back up. So this is good information to know. And it's going to tie in to the sleep apnea monitoring, which I'm going to get into in just a second. And if you're curious to try this yourself, I've got the best Rincon Gen 2 discount code linked right below in the description. Plus, there's a QR code on screen if you want to check that same current deal. With no subscription fees, long battery life, and some genuinely useful health data, I can see why this ring has been getting so much attention lately. One of the features that really sets the Rincon Gen 2 apart is its ability to help assess one's risk for sleep apnea, something most wearables don't touch at all. The way it works is simple. You run a three night sleep test, which you start manually in the app. After three nights, the ring analyzes your breath patterns, blood oxygen, and heart rate to estimate your risk level. You'll get an OSA risk level, which will say normal, mild, moderate, or severe. This level measures the severity of your obstructive sleep apnea plus your AHI score, that's the apnea hypopnea index, and your ODI score, which shows how often your blood oxygen drops by 3% or more while you sleep. It also reports your lowest SpO2, and it can do this thanks to its high frequency blood oxygen tracking every two seconds, which gives a much more detailed picture than most fitness trackers. Of course, this isn't a medical device. It's meant for risk awareness, not diagnosis. But honestly, it's a feature that can help you catch warning signs you might otherwise miss. And that's pretty powerful and worthwhile, in my opinion. So let's take a look at my sleep apnea assessment, what risk I'm at, and then I'm going to show you how to start the assessment yourself, or how to restart the assessment if you've done it once before and want to do it again. So let's scroll down on the dashboard here. And right here we have sleep apnea monitoring. Right away, it says AHI 0.9, no abnormalities detected as of July 18th. So here it says no abnormalities detected, gives me a little paragraph about some things that I should know about or when to reassess myself. We scroll down and it has a graph about our events per hour over the three nights that it recorded my sleep. And as you can see, the bars are very low. It has my SpO2 information along with my blood oxygen sat saturation right below that. And as you can see, all my numbers are looking pretty good and optimal or in a normal range. And if I continue to scroll down, it's just going to give me more information about sleep apnea, what it is and when to look out for it or do a reassessment, which is really, really good information. They took this feature very seriously, which I can appreciate. If I scroll down beyond that, what's really cool is we can see trends in our AHI history record via week, month or year 
depending on how long you've been wearing this ring and how many tests you do. And that's nice to see because maybe after a year, you can see a trend of your numbers just ever so slightly going up. And that's going to be very useful information for your health. And uh, I think that's really, really cool that they have this feature. Now, at the top here, you can see it says comprehensive assessment reassess. If you're doing this for the first time, it's going to say start assessment. And all you have to do is click that button and that's it. So if I go ahead and hit reassess, that's it. Now it's in progress. Now over the next three nights, it's gonna track and monitor my sleep apnea risks, and it's gonna show me another assessment once it's completed those three nights. And that's it. It's super easy to do, super simple, but you do have to do it manually every time you want an assessment done. So I do appreciate this feature. At first I was like, oh, sleep apnea, whatever, like what even is that? Now I'm like, oh, very good to know. I'm good, I'm sleeping well, body's healthy, let's go baby. So after using the Rincon Gen 2 for sleep tracking over the past few weeks, here's what stood out to me. It's genuinely comfortable to wear overnight, the sleep tracking feels comprehensive, and having sleep apnea risk monitoring built into a smart ring is something you just don't see very often. And to add to that, there's no subscription fees and a 10 to 12 day battery life, and it's been surprisingly low maintenance. I charge this thing like once every 10 days and it takes like maybe an hour to charge. It's absolutely fantastic piece of hardware. That said though, there are a couple of things to know. The OSA test has to be started manually like I showed you. So if you forget, you won't get the data. Uh, the app doesn't always give clear advice either, which I touched on and went over with you. Sometimes you're left interpreting the numbers for yourself. And of course, this is not a substitute for real medical testing if you are truly worried about your health. If you're curious to try it for yourself, there's no point in waiting. You could start tracking your sleep today. I've left the exclusive Rincon Gen 2 discount linked right below in the description, or you can just scan the QR codes you see on screen for today's best deal. And if you want to see how the Rincon Gen 2 stacks up against other smart rings, check out our Rincon Gen 2 review and our full Rincon Gen 2 versus Ultra Human Air comparison. Both are right here on the Health News channel, and I will see you in the next one.